Sorry. Right. Can you see my screen, Steve? I'm just trying to get you onto the spotlight as well. Yes, we can see it. Thanks, Paul. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, Steve, thank you for the very kind introduction. And um, I concur, it would be lovely to be in the Hyatt in Joburg, uh, enjoying a cocktail with you guys. Um, but that's not to be. However, I think this is pretty cool that we can do this uh, remotely around the world. And, and I'm hoping it works really well. Um, hold on, my video is gone. Wait a second. Let me just start my video again. I don't know why it died. There we go. Can you see me? Good. All right. So, you know, I, I think just to back up what Steve said, you know, we've seen, for example, our WSO2 cloud traffic double uh, in, in April and, and May this year because of in the, the, the pandemic and, and people going to digital. We have one customer, which is a significant, um, uh, a significant uh, healthcare provider in the US and our APIs help drive their uh, their digital and in particular their video consultation system uh, and they saw an 8,000% growth in traffic uh, in, the, in the API layer uh, over a very short period of time. Luckily the, the WSO2 technology scaled up beautifully to solve that. Uh, what I want to talk about today is how we see the API world and, and what that means for, for, for you as a, as a business trying to navigate this world. And, 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 and I want to try and provide a, a different insight, a new way of looking at the world that we're all in, that I hope will help you think of this in an interesting way, uh, open your eyes to some opportunities and, and, and perhaps build some new business model ideas in your mind as well. So the, the first thing I want to say are that APIs are the products of the 21st century. And uh, I, we're certainly not the only people to say this, but I think this is really key, which is that we see APIs becoming true business products and not just technical, uh, technical enablers, but actual business concepts that, that are sold, resold, and, and make money for companies. And, and uh, I want to try and dig into that. And hopefully you can see, um, hopefully you can see that, that there are different ways that you get these products. And the first one is that you see directly monetized APIs. So uh, these are our customers, but of course, there are other examples from out there in the world. So one of the best known is Twilio. Twilio is a company that sells uh, SMS uh, and voice services as APIs only. And you pay per API call. Each API call has an action in the real world, sends a text message or helps you uh, call someone up or answer the phone. And Twilio's system is, is, is very clear. You know, it, the, the business is delivered as APIs and you pay for APIs. But we also have uh, customers like Fiserv, eBay, uh, Cerner, Appagate, who are doing this direct monetization with the WSO2 API platform. And then we have indirectly monetized APIs. So these are APIs where the the, the API is driving business, but it's driving existing business. So for example, the Bank of New York Mellon is one of the world's biggest asset managers. And what they do is they manage $33 trillion of assets on behalf of pension funds, insurance companies, other banks. And uh, they decided to move all their management of those assets from various sort of old FTP, all kinds of systems. About six years ago, they decided to unify on an API based model and they built a platform called Nexen. And because they're handling such large numbers of, of assets, all of this is done digitally 
and all of it goes through the WSO2 API platform. So although we're not charging, uh, they're not charging per track per API call, those API calls are driving genuine business. And then I'm afraid, sorry, my slide, the text has got hidden there. It should say combined physical digital. So these are models where you see uh, companies that are building a physical product like a Jaguar car, and they are adding a, a digital product alongside it, which is the often called the digital twin. And that, that digital product, the, the connected car, adds significant value to the physical car and creates a, a much greater offering. Uh, and we have lots of other interesting examples from our, our catalog of APIs there. And, and of course, these companies are just a small smattering of examples of people doing these kind of things with our thing. And of course, then there's the backbone for digital transformation API products. So in other words, using the, using the platform to be a backbone for all of the digital transformation. And, and I think that's important. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that you know, that's where we were five years ago. We were in the model where we were saying, okay, we're building a backbone, we're building an ESB and API management layer to help you drive integration. Today, that backbone is now feeding a front-end set of real products that are adding significant business value to the company. So that's really a message I'm trying to get across here, which is that we have the supply at the bottom, and then we have the actual products at the top. And what does that remind you of? Well, hopefully that reminds you of, in real products, we have this concept called an integrated supply chain. And this was really a creation of the 20th century, a massive innovation in the, in the real physical product world, where we put together product lifecycle management, supply chain management, ERP, financials and logistics management. And we sort of said, okay, we're creating products, we're managing them. We want to into an integrated connected model so that we know exactly what, what we have in the supply chain. We can do logistics management. We can really manage our products uh, in an in a integrated way. So what can we learn from that model for the API world. If APIs are the products of the 21st century, then surely we need to learn something from the 20th century. And what we can learn is that there's a set of uh, disciplines that can be directly mapped from those disciplines of the 20th century. So we had product lifecycle management, we have product lifecycle management for APIs. We had ERP and financials for real products, we have API insights and monetization in the digital world. We had supply chain management, which is how you build your back end and how you, you integrate your back end. And we, we need that same integration and enablement of APIs at the back end to create API products. And of course, we had logistics in the supply chain that really translates into DevOps and management in the digital world. So we have this API supply chain. And this API supply chain is really a, uh, a key concept that we believe is going to change the, the way we think about APIs and the way we manage APIs and our whole vision of what we're doing to help you build those API products and, and take them to market. And if you look at, if you dig into these areas, you see there's a lot of key capabilities that you need. So let's, let's start at the, at the techie end of it. You know, you need to integrate with your legacy systems, SAP, Salesforce, Oracle, PeopleSoft, many others. You need to connect to healthcare, EDI, and other technologies. You need to do data integration. And increasingly, we're seeing people building real-time APIs and real-time products. And so having event and streaming integration is absolutely a key technology in this space. At the same time, you want to have a highly efficient logistics model. 
So you need to have continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. You want to be able to deploy this in Kubernetes, multi-cloud and hybrid environments, as well as traditional on-prem. You want to have things like micro gateways to uh, manage integration of your new cloud native uh, services into alongside your legacy uh, APIs. And you want to do things like blue green and canary deployment. At the business side, you know, these are products. So you want to do things like market testing and lifecycle management of the products. You want to do design and creation of APIs. And what we're increasingly seeing is that we have uh, techie teams building APIs at the back end uh, using CI, CD and, and very much automated processes. But we have an API product manager whose job is to assemble those APIs into an API product, to aggregate those APIs into something of real value, define a subscription plan, define an onboarding process and a subscription process and do all those things and put together the documentation, test this out with the, the market, get feedback, run forums and so forth. And then of course we want to have reporting, billing, analytics, uh, subscription platforms and so forth to really turn this into a genuine product and monetize it. Now that may be direct monetization, that may be indirect monetization. Uh, and I want to say this kind of digital integrated supply chain, this, this uh, API supply chain doesn't mean digitizing existing supply chain. So we're not talking about di using digital with your, your physical product supply chain. Although, you know, I'm not saying that's not part of it, but I, I want to make sure this, you really get the idea. This is a, a genuine metaphor or analogy. This is a new concept. So the integrated API supply chain is a new concept about creating end-to-end -end digital systems that generate API products and manage them. And uh, I, just to give you some real examples, so we're seeing uh, supply chains in finance. So open banking has opened up banks, payment gateways to create this new concept of a third party provider, which is allowing fintechs to create all kinds of new digital products, new API based products that integrate with both existing banks and offer new opportunities. And, you know, to be honest, Africa has been, I would say, the leading continent in this journey. We have seen amazing things in mobile wallets. And, and for example, WSO2 is very involved in creating a mobile wallet in Kenya. Uh, and Kenyan mobile wallets are, are, are kind of, I think, the, the largest per capita usage of digital wallets. This is an interesting case of building a supply chain in, in the telco industry. So a company called Appagate, uh, which is a very strong partner of WSO2, uh, and we helped set this company up, takes APIs from multiple providers and aggregates them into a bundle and then sells those bundles to sell providers all through Southeast Asia. And what they do is they do a revenue share. So in other words, they sell a bundle subscription to the sell provider, which creates an easily, uh, easily monetized and accessed uh, bundle of APIs. And then they, they disaggregate that, that revenue and share it back with the original providers of the APIs. But what's really interesting is that Appagate is working with Orange and Orange is working in the Middle East and has created a hub. And so now Orange is buying that bundled API and reselling it to their, to sell providers in their region. So now instead of a two-way revenue share, we have a three-way revenue share. So in other words, Orange takes, a, takes revenue and shares it with Appagate and then Appagate shares it with the original API providers. So this is, this is kind of like the emergence of of international trade by the Phoenicians in the Mediterranean, you know, 3000 years ago when they started uh, plying the, the, the med with, their, with goods from, you know, from Libya to Crete to Naples. And they took those goods across and they, they traded them and they, they became an intermediary. And that's really the kind of, I think what we mean by products, that the idea that you can resell these, sell these 
they become fungible real business value concepts. So uh, I'm not going to talk in detail on the, our market vision, but we, we see four big areas where the world is moving forward. We see federation and business models, which I'm going to talk about in a second. We see a strong move to the cloud, uh, both private cloud and public cloud, uh, and multi-cloud and hybrid deployments. We see a significant move towards modernizing development with CIC de-enablement, Kubernetes being used as a development environment. And we see a big shift to polyglot, both at the back end and the front end. So we're seeing not just Swagger, but GraphQL, Async API, gRPC, Kafka, and so forth being pulled together. And, and uh, I think a really key point that I want to bring in is this, we call it a kind of quantum duality, that you can look at APIs as both a business movement and a technology movement at the same time. And it's really important to keep these two things in mind. And, and I think our vision of a, a API-based supply chain is, is absolutely there. The other thing is this big shift to cloud native. Uh, and this is changing the, the way that we build and think about our platforms. Uh, and we're seeing much more async, we're seeing APIs everywhere. We're seeing uh, open source really, a very strong player in this, in this cloud native model and a shift to pay as you go models, whether that's per transaction in the cloud or, or basing it on transactions in your data center. And products rely on ecosystems. And one of the things I think I was trying to get at earlier throughout this talk is this concept that we're beginning to see multi-party business models emerge in the API world. And uh, if you go to that link, you'll see a whole hour long talk about this that I gave in, in Paris at the end of last year. I, I, I'm gonna just summarize that very quickly. We're seeing uh, all sorts of patterns and we've so far identified five different patterns of how people are using APIs to create and enable multi-party business models. And we call this federation. So for example, uh, Scania is a, a massive manufacturer of trucks in Sweden, and they have 1500 internal systems. Uh, and, and they try to integrate those in a centralized center of excellence type model. And they realized that wasn't possible. So they've decided that instead of doing that, they're going to use a federated internal marketplace and an API product strategy to improve their integration. And that's going really, really well. Uh, I talked to bank, about Bank of New York Mellon earlier. And one of the things that's really interesting is that they're starting to open up their, their platform to enable third parties and customers and partners to add API products into their marketplace. So the blue little APIs are theirs, and then now they're starting to allow their partners and customers to add in red those red APIs into that picture. And, and they want to blur the lines and create an ecosystem, and that's really, really interesting. We're seeing a lot of uh, organizations create what you might call a closed group marketplace. So for example, governments are doing this by allowing several different government departments to kind of equally create a marketplace uh, that open that makes it feel like you have a single unified uh, view of the world when in fact it's multiple different parties participating. The fourth pattern we're seeing is where you have a shared revenue marketplace and, and we did a project called IdeaBiz that created an API platform where people could share in revenue and, and that onboarded nearly 2000 developers in 18 months and built more than 2000 apps. I think it was around 3000 applications built on top of that. And finally, Appigate is a kind of aggregator marketplace where they pull together APIs from multiple parties and resell them as a bundle. And that's, I think, a, another interesting model. So, so the, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, all of these are creating a supply chain of APIs that need management, they need logistics, they need integration, they need front end product lifecycle management, and they need API insights and monetization. And, and these patterns, I think, are, are really inspiring when you think about your business. And, and I talk to all sorts of CIOs 
and CTOs all the time. And I see people trying to navigate how they can turn their assets into new digital business models. And, and I think this is a really good way of looking at it. So I'm not going to talk about it, but we have actually been working on some technology to help enable this federation. This is an open initiative. And if you're interested, just jump in on the GitHub and the mailing list and, and uh, come talk to us about that. So uh, I, I've slightly overrun, but I think I started late as well. So I hope that um, Chris Tony, Steve and, and Stefano will forgive me. Uh, but I, I just want to say, you know, this is our vision. We, we believe that our vision is that there's this integrated API supply chain, this digital supply chain, and we want to be the number one provider of cloud and hybrid services for it. And we have the platform, the single platform that provides all those technologies that you need to do that. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not going to take questions now, but there's a session for Q&A at the end. And I hope, um, I hope you stick around and, and enter your questions. And you can enter those questions now and we'll get to them later. And once again, I really want to thank Steve and Christoni and, and the team for organizing this. And I'm going to now hand back control to the to the team. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, and as always, that was uh, hit the mark perfectly. Um, and thank you for that high level and vision. And I think that uh, key to our businesses is that we're able to connect the sort of the practical of the day to day um, with those kinds of uh, insights in terms of okay, well, what is the actual overall objective and goal that we're really trying to achieve, uh, and and without that connection, um, we definitely do struggle. So I, I really um, appreciate we, that, Steve. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I I love that. I think that's a key part of WSO2's vision is that we 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 don't just work at the high level or just the low level, but we help you to. Uh, to join together those two things. And I think that's absolutely key. So thank you. Yeah. And, and it's actually the, um, and as I showed in that introduction, it's, it's really what we've tried to put together in the structuring of the actual event, you know, so in terms of these sessions, having that sort of package uh, that's got the, the, the vision, the practical from a uh, case study perspective, uh, the product perspective, and then allowing us to get that sort of breakaway session on the Thursdays where we can really get uh, interactive. And hopefully if, uh, if we all participate throughout the series, you know, those that uh, do are gonna get material benefit from it, which is really what the goal is here.